The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency George Mane We, President of the Republic of Liberia. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency George Mane We, President of the Republic of Liberia, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Your Excellency, Maria Fernanda Espinoza Garcias, President of the 73rd Sections of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellency Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, and Heads of Delegations, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to address this 73rd section of the General Assembly of the United Nations on behalf of the government and people of Liberia. Allow me, first of all, to congratulate you, Madam President, and the government of the people of Ecuador for your elections as president of the 73rd section of this August Assembly. With our eyes on history, Liberia takes special notes and hears your selections as the fourth woman president of the General Assembly. Let me also express appreciation to Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who dynamics him and far-sighted leadership continues to strengthen the United Nations in the face of perennial global challenges. Madam President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, just two weeks ago, we joined millions in Ghana and around the world to bid a final farewell to former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, who devoted his life to peacemaking and conflict resolution, a calling I wish he was renowned and successful. With his passing, Africa lost one of its illustrious sons, and the world had lost one of the most outstanding diplomats of our time. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Madam President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, late last year, Liberians participated in presidential and legislative elections, the result of which represented a major shift in the underlying fundamentals of the Liberian political dynamics. In an orderly, lawful, in a peaceful manner, Liberians voted in overwhelming numbers for a change for hope. This was the first time in 73 years that Liberians enjoy a peaceful transfer of power from one democratically elected government to another. At the end of the long campaign, when the results were announced after the runoff, it became clear that the pendulum swung in the directions of useful leadership, and the paradigm has shifted in favor of change and transformation. The United Nations and its various bodies, as well as regional organizations and many of our bilateral partners and friends, were direct witnesses to the majority of the Liberian electorates. Our respect for law and order and the successful democratic processes. As standard bearer of the winning coalition for democratic change, the mantle and responsibility of leading this transformation therefore devolves upon me. When I was inaugurated as the 24th president of Liberia on January 22, 2018, the challenges of leadership are enormous, but in each and every one of these challenges, I see opportunities to make things better and to bring permanent improvements to the lives of all Liberians as we devise policies and programs that will have a lasting and positive impact on the lives of our citizens. 
Madam President, the umbrella program on which we intend to pursue prosperity is the proper agenda for development and prosperity, our national development plan for the next five years. This is not an agenda only for the poor. It is for the benefit of all Liberians. But it is a policy framework that gives priority to the alleviation of poverty and its core objectives and focus is to reduce the marginalizations of the most vulnerable, with at the same time creating a conducive atmosphere for the middle and upper income Liberian to grow and prosper. We want to be a harmonious society based on the goal of economic empowerment, especially for the underprivileged. Our proper agenda is therefore designed to give power to the people, promote economic diversification, protect sustainable peace, and encourage good governance. We appeal to our friends, bilateral partners, and private investors to support this agenda. Madam President, as we focus on actions plan to implement our development agenda, we are acutely aware of the vulnerability of our useful population who are clearly disadvantaged as a result of high unemployment and lack of access to quality educational opportunities. Our plan is to revise the unfortunate situations and make them productive citizens through the provision of adequate educational facility at the high school and college levels. For those who still have interest in pursuing academic programs, for those youth that are left behind due to the disastrous civil crisis and who have outgrown their school years, my government is investing in technical vocational education and training programs to build their entrepreneur and the marketable skill set. Being conscious of the importance and impact of infrastructure on social and economic development, my government has identified investment in roads, energies, and ports as our key priority, and it is therefore soliciting funding and other technical expertise to undertake these projects in pursuit of our goal to connect our cities and towns and strengthen our economy. Madam President, agriculture is Liberia's comparative advantage and has also been identified as one of our major poverty alleviation instruments because it will lead us to self-sufficiency in food production and self-employment as well as open doors for industrialization. With the implementation of a new special economic zone, we intend to attract labor-intensive light manufacturing. Madam President, drawing from the experience of the 2014 Ebola epidemic that took the lives of thousands of Liberians and health workers, we intend to efficiently and properly organize our healthcare delivery system to ensure that the health and well-being of our people is improved. Finally, we are placing emphasis on national security in order to enable our people to move and live freely without fear. With the recent withdrawal of the United Nations peacekeeping missions in Liberia, we are now in charge of our own security. We thank you for the sacrifices that you have made in securing and maintaining the peace in Liberia after our prolonged civil conflict. In this regard, we would like to express our personal appreciation to Mr. Fari Zari of Afghanistan, who, as special representative for Liberia and the last head of United Nations mission in Liberia from 2015 to 2018, supervised an orderly withdrawal of troops while simultaneously securing the peaceful environment that allowed a very robust political campaign to take place with our incident. Madam President, my country has finally turned the corner with more years of peace than preceding years of war, 
gathered by our peace agreement signed in Accra 15 years ago. We thank the members and the Security Council of the United Nations for the UMA peacekeeping mission, which brought stability and helped and help us rebuild our institutions and communities. We are a peacekeeping success story, and we are grateful for the support given. But the nation which has experienced civil war must never take peace for granted and forget the long shadow that years of conflict still cast over people's lives. We must realize and appreciate that ours is still a fragile peace. Our people across the country still bear the scars of conflict. We therefore intend to initiate a series of national peace dialogue throughout Liberia. We must restart those difficult conversations at the local level and include our youth so that they and we do not repeat the costly mistake of the past. It is clear to me that these frank exchanges are an essential step in bringing lasting healing, reconciliation, and unity to our people. Our agenda is not one of division, but rather it is an agenda that intends to provide an enabling environment for the united and reconciled people to be able to benefit and prosper from the economic dividends of peace. Madam President, I recall with humility that I was once selected to serve as UNICEF Peace Ambassador, a mission which I undertook with passion, convictions, and commitment to support and inform the world of the principle of which this organization stands. I was also privileged to be appointed as Peace Ambassador for Liberia, a mandate to apply these principles, preserving and maintaining the peace which your peacekeeping mission are so successfully restored. I deeply and personally cherish these principles. And so today, in closing, I want to reaffirm the support of my government for the work of the United Nations in striving to achieve global peace, counter-terrorism, UN reform, security, good governance, and the advancement of the principle of universal human rights, we further reiterate our commitment to the rule of law, the alleviations of poverty, gender equality, the elimination of gender-based violence, and the empowerment of women, girls, and young people. I also believe that the overwhelming mandate I received from Liberian people is a mandate to end corruption in public service and I remain fully committed to this tax. Madam President, with your generous assistance and strong support, as well as that of other international institutions and member states, and with God's blessing, we will fulfill our agenda to lift our people from poverty to prosperity. I thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency George Mane Wei, President of the Republic of Liberia, for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the Head of State.